here uh, is uh, the size and the connectivity of Buckeye Nation. Uh, whether we're here in Columbus, any place else in Ohio, or honestly any place else in the country or around the world, uh, there are Buckeyes everywhere and, and they're all connected. Uh, every Buckeye connected here to the campus and then every Buckeye connected to the rest of Buckeye Nation. I was telling the students at Convocation, you know, you, you believe you've started at, at a university, and that's true, but you've also joined a family in which you now have 500,000 cousins. <laughs> uh, it's a great thing. And let me say we're excited to officially launch regional advancement, and this uh, puts more staff and resources uh, at your fingertips to try to help with great efforts that are taking place out in the field. And we're doing our very best, as I said, to make sure that Buckeye Nation is, is robust and is connected well in all the different places that we happen to be. The, the campus is on a real roll. There are uh, several things. I had a chance in August to sort of kind of sum up things for this last year when I was talking to the to the trustees. And so there are three or four things that I shared with them that I'll share with you that are really, I thought, good reflections of how we were doing. For one, we had a record number of applicants last fall. We had 46,000 applicants last fall uh, for our freshman class. And let me say that compares to 26,000 in 2010. So we had uh, uh, a great increase in just that short period of time. We're more popular than we've ever been, and that's really, really terrific. We had the, uh, because that was the case, because we had the greatest number of applicants for our slots, we had the highest grades and test scores uh, ever. That was something we're very uh, pleased and proud about, that we're um, uh, even more selective than we've been. It also means that we have that our regional campuses uh, still opportunity for Ohioans, so as we become more selective in Columbus, uh, through our regional campuses who are a part of our one university, we're a very important part of that. We can maintain, while we see the selectivity rise a uh, bit here, we still have an opportunity for a different pathway to in, enter the Ohio State University, so we can make sure to offer that opportunity to as many Ohioans as, as necessary. And so we're pleased about that, and pleased about the great work that, that takes place on the regional campuses. I mentioned it was the most uh, greatest number of applicants we had in our most competitive class. It was also our most diverse class. And so one of the, the when we're looking at these things together, we see uh, it's great for us uh, to be selective and excellent, but we also want to be inclusive. And we like very much being excellent by who we have, the people who we have here, those people who uh, form Buckeye Nation, who form our student bodies, who make us uh, terrific. So we like it that our excellence is reflected based on who we have and not on who we've excluded. So being large and inclusive and excellent and even more inclusive and more excellent as time goes on is something really, really important to us. We had a couple of other things that were really um, uh, great that worked really well for us that I'm uh, pleased about. We had um, <clears throat> a, a wonderful year at our medical center this last year. We had. Uh, uh, two or three things at the medical center that worked really, really well. First, we had the largest margin uh, in our history. Uh, actually, we exceeded our budget by quite a lot. We uh, had implemented a new cost-saving strategy about uh, now 18 months ago. And we found out that there were more costs that were savable than we had uh, thought. So that was really a very, uh, uh, very effective thing for us. And it was simple things like uh, in purchasing and procurement, we, we might have uh, dozens of types of toilet paper that we were buying from like, a wide variety of vendors. I use that as an example, but true. <laughs> and, uh, and, and let me say what we were able to do is consolidate some of those contracts, find vendors that would give us the best price and large their business, and that drove the price down even more. And I'll say that year over year, we saved about $100 million. And I'll say that when I say that we save that much, you can you can hear about saving money, and uh, that's a big number. <laughs> and, uh, but you hear about saving money. We actually have a way to capture the money that we saved, and we had a little bit of pressure on our reserves. The reserves had gotten a bit low. We needed to build days of cash to make us more financially um, valuable, and so we were able to see as we saved that money, a change in days of cash. And we actually were about five years ahead of our projected uh, recuperation for days in cash. And so we, as we saved money on the one side, we saw our, our financial picture actually improve in, in a tangible way on the other side. So it wasn't just uh, ethereal. The other thing that we saw that was really great was our patient care. And there was a uh, group of hospitals that worked together, the university uh, hospitals, or a thing called the UHC, or University Hospital Consortium. This is actually an important thing, if I can say that. There are about 105, 110 academic medical centers that participate in this UHC. 
and there are about 300 hospitals uh, that participate in this UHC. And what we do is we share incredible amounts of data, detailed data, on all of our patients with each other every month. There's a, a data warehouse that collects when patients were admitted, how long it took them to get from the emergency room to the bed, to the door, when are they discharged, all the outcomes and things like that on a wide variety of conditions. And then we share that information and compare it with each other. But the idea being, uh, and when you are able to see yourself compared to your peers, the idea being, how are we doing on things like central line infections, not to be too uh, detailed, but uh, uh, things that you might want to try to prevent, how are you having too many of those, et cetera, et cetera. The point I want to make is at the end of the year, this is a cooperative volunteer effort, at the end of the year, the UHC uh, puts out a, a list, and it doesn't want to compare everyone with everyone in every way, but it shows the 10 institutions that have done the best. And so out of the 110, 10 kind of make, an, make it to be an honor roll of doing, doing a really great job. And the honor roll things measure a variety of things, but at the end of the day, it's a rating of quality and safety. And I was really pleased that at the end of last year, the quality and safety ratings came out, and the Ohio State University Wexford Medical Center was rated third nationally in quality and safety. Just one, one behind uh, second was the Mayo Clinic, and they hear our footsteps. And so uh, we're really pleased that we were able to do these things that were for, and I mentioned this in a little bit of detail, cost cutting on one side, cost avoidance, and really grow our days of cash by uh, nearly $100 million, a great year that way. At the same time, our quality and safety were at higher levels and better than ever before. So that's uh, being fiscally responsible and having better patient care and better outcome, more better patient satisfaction than ever before. That's great. On research, we did wonderfully in research. I'll mention um, two quick examples. Last night, we cut a ribbon on the Neurological Institute. This is a collection of people from 14 colleges on the campus that are focused on uh, neurological, neurology, and brain uh, diseases and looking at incredible things like the uh, NeuroBridge uh, project that we have with Mattel Corporation, College of Medicine and Engineering that's helping a, a man who was quadriplegic learn how to move his hand. And a year ago, he was able to move his hand a little bit. Uh, last summer, he was able to lift a spoon. He can now uh, pick up a telephone. Um, so it's an amazing sort of Star Wars thing to see this happen. I've actually met him. And don't know how much full recovery he'll have, but I'll say it to someone who did, couldn't use any of his um, hands or legs um, uh, a year and a half ago to be able now to pick up a telephone, to be able to uh, start to approach beating himself with a spoon. The things that are just incredible he's able to do. And this is uh, the first step of what we believe will be a great new age. So that was great. We also had a, our cancer center. We have a comprehensive cancer center. There are 41 comprehensive cancer centers designated by the National Cancer Institute across the country. Every five is millions of dollars per grant, for a core grant. Every five years you compete uh, that grant again, you reapply, and a group of stern-faced people from across the country come, I'm sorry, a group of uh, thoughtful, I'm like, uh, uh, thoughtful, uh, caring individuals uh, representing the, uh, with a couple, you get a review, a several day site visit review. And we have that review, and then you get a score, and the score goes from um, it's like a golf score, the lower the better. So the highest score that they give is 100. That's not very good. That's, you know, you're in jeopardy there. The lowest score they give is 10. That's a, essentially a flawless or perfect application. Our application was 2,000 pages long, which is typical for these things. There, It's a very involved thing. As I said, it's millions of dollars over five years. And uh, in the history of the uh, uh, Granting all of the 41 centers are reviewed every five years, so this is a continual process across the country. Uh, one institution once had gotten a 10, uh, not a university, but a uh, focused only cancer center had gotten a 10 at one time. That's a perfect score. Uh, and then actually, I was happy to say that although no university had gotten a score of 10 before, that's no longer true because we received a score of 10 this year. So let's say you're a reviewer. Some of us, you've been on review panels or voted for things. You, you get money. But if you have a 15 or 20, I believe, but certainly a 15, then your rating is exceptional. That's better than outstanding. So there's no reason, you don't get any more money with that. There's no reason to give you a score that's lower than 15 because that's already exceptional. Or if you're really incredible, maybe a 12 or 
an 11, but, but a 10 means that they can't think of any way, none of them together can think of any way to improve on what you've got. It really stretches their imagination on the best that something can be and you get a, a perfect score. And I, I would have thought that was unheard of and I'm really happy that I've heard of it. Uh, <laughs> so that's really an incredible effort by uh, hundreds and hundreds of people to, to make this true. And it really, again, is a university-wide enterprise. The Cancer Center starts and lives at the medical center in the health sciences, but also includes engineering and law and the arts and food, agricultural and environmental sciences. So it really stretches across the campus and that was a, a great reflection of the quality of our research. The other thing that's really great is that we had a, a wonderful fundraising year. Uh, a couple of records that we uh, set last year that are really great records. One is that we had 237,000 uh, contributors last year. Uh, nearly a quarter of a million people donated money to us last year. Some of them were small, uh, uh, gifts of $10 and other things like that. Some of them were much larger. At the dedication of the Neurological Institute last night, we were there um, thanking the Ross family, and one of the things we thanked the Ross family, well, let me say the Ross family began their first donation to us was a $10 donation in 1969. And so we said that's a great $10 donation, and we're really happy to have a little reception for them about three or four weeks ago where they, had, because they'd given us a $10 million uh, donation, we thought that was a nice progression for them. <laughs> Uh, no, I you say, I, uh, uh, Stan and Jordy were there last night, they felt great. I want all of you to know how, how great they felt, and the way you can do that is with everybody. I, 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 but, but they really did feel uh, great. They uh, are really connected to the Ohio State University, what this university has meant to them and to the community, and they're fortunate enough to have uh, the means to be able to contribute back to the university. And I would say they were beaming ear to ear uh, at the ability to be able to make this great. A great gift. We also received more money uh, in cash over the transom. $360 million arrived last year and pledges for much more. And uh, so this is really a, a wonderful year for us uh, that way. And let me say that a couple more things that we're doing. And yesterday morning, I uh, met with a group of faculty, the Academy of Teaching. And these are faculty members who won our major teaching awards. They're great. We spent about 5% of our time talking about how proud and thankful we were for what, all the great things they've done. And then we spent about 95% of our time talking about how they might do more and how we might incorporate more teachers in doing even better. And I approached faculty in this discussion with the, the, the belief, and I have no reason to believe that it's not true, that the people I'm talking to are the, the single individual best teachers in the whole world. And so if I'm talking to a dozen people, I'll say, if we're going to rate teachers in the world, I'm going to uh, believe that you'd be rated numbers 1 through 12 right, right here in the room. And congratulations for that. And, and then the question is, is it possible to do any better? You know, is there, is there anything that we could do to help this be better, to help bring more people in? And I was very pleased about the robustness of the discussion among the faculty saying, what can we do to spread excellence of teaching uh, even further across the university? And we do a really good job teaching. I don't mean to make it seem as though we don't, but can we be even better? Can we reward teaching even more? And this is a great discussion we had about that. So uh, this was really, really a wonderful thing. Today I had a, uh, several meetings with students and uh, some more faculty, which is great, several meetings with students. Uh, some uh, students were presidential hosts and I asked them what brought them to Ohio State and how their experience had been. And I'll say that, uh, let me save that for the end and say that right before that I also met with our student presidents, our student, our student body president and vice president. And I'll say meeting with them leaves you inspired and empowered uh, uh, to know that we can make a real difference in the world and be able to work with young people who are so mature and so focused and so uh, really eager to do something that helps to elevate the quality of life here on the campus is um, uh, quite uplifting to me. So I enjoyed meeting with our student presidents who are, uh, as I said, uh, you really would call them young women. You know, they're, they're like real adults trying to do what they can to help this be a better experience. Uh, I say better experience, that kind of harks back to what I said about better teaching. And then what I, the, the experience I had with uh, snack time with our presidential hosts a few, few hours ago. I went around the table, a very diverse group of students from all places around Ohio and a couple from other states, and asked them about their experience here and uh, if they could share things with me that they'd like to see different or protected or whatever. One of the ways we're saving money is yeah. not. <laughs> Can he save or actually just get 
quarter of a penny saved is a quarter of a penny earned. Uh, but uh, the uh, we got next up in here. They're going to turn out the uh, expensive amplified sound. <laughs> I learned something from that. What was great as the students went around the room, they had different reasons for coming here, different majors, uh, different careers in front of them. What was uh, what they all shared was what an incredible place this is to be. How how blessed they felt, how fortunate they felt. The quality teaching they had, the quality several of them were doing research, quality chance to do research. Several have traveled overseas and other places. What life uh, expanding and eye opening experiences they had there. And, over, uh, and overarching all, I mean, kind of uh, forming a, a real cap on all of it was the quality of the people that they had met. Uh, the wonderful uh, friends and, and, and teachers and supporters they met here on the campus and how they really felt that they were part of an outstanding, outstanding community and that that community afforded them with uh, a freeway to the future. Unbelievable opportunities, people willing to support you in that and a cohesive community surrounding you to make this a really really exciting time. The only uh, sort of negative regret I heard uh, was from uh, one of the students who was a senior saying it's kind of scary being a senior because she had a job already and that was great. She said kind of scary being a senior because next year I won't have coming back to school to look forward to. And uh, I thought that was really a great, uh, a great thing to hear and a great reflection of what a wonderful experience this is for so many people. And it explains honestly why you're all here. That you had those experiences, you feel connected to the university, you feel connected as proud Buckeyes. You share that when you come back here to the, the hub to spend time with ourselves and, and with your colleagues, but you also share that when you're around the country and around the world. And I'll say that um, we all feel that it's all an incredible thing. We're all proud, proud to be Buckeyes. My uh, job, now I've gotten to my job, and my job tonight is to make sure uh, to thank you so much for all you do on behalf of our great university. And thank you for so all that you do on behalf of your broader communities to really make this country uh, this, and this world a better place. So thank you so much for that. Thank you for your volunteerism and your dedication. Uh, thank you for your focus on this great university. Thank you for being great Buckeyes. And let me finish as I always finish uh, by saying uh, great to see you and go Bucks! Yeah.